Where do you think free speech stands in your country, Vivek, at the moment? And what would you do to uh, address this issue? Well, at, in 1776 and in principle, free speech is the most important bedrock principle of the United States. The idea that whoever you are, whatever your views are, whatever your opinions are, you get to express them as long as I get to express mine in return. That was the bargain of the American Revolution. This is a radical idea for most of human history. In old world Europe and in England, it was done the other way. They said that, no, no, the people cannot be trusted to speak their minds. In fact, we, the government, cannot trust the people with the truth. We have to tell them noble lies. And if they criticize us for us, they must be suppressed because that's what's required to preserve order and structure in a society. In the United States of America in 1776, we fought a revolution to say it's done the other way. I am sad to say, Russell, that that's not the America that I live in today. The America that I live in today is one where the government deputizes private companies to do through the back door what the government could not do through the front door under the Constitution. Indeed, that is why we are unable right now to have this conversation on YouTube. That is pathetic. That is shameful. That is a hollowed out husk of the country that I grew up in. If George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton were walking the streets of this country today, they would not be proud. They would be appalled at seeing a country that looks more like the kingdom they declared independence from than the country they actually set into motion. And you know what my job is? When I leave office in January 2033, right, I'll be 47, 48 years old, twice the age Thomas Jefferson was, by the way, when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. People forget that. My son will be just entering high school. Young Americans will once again be proud of those radical ideals we set used to set this country into motion rather than being ashamed of them. Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson and George Washington will once again rest in peace. But the only way we're going to get there, the first step we're going to have to take to get there is to restore the First Amendment itself. And it's in the First Amendment for a reason. We have absolute free speech in this country. There's no opinion that you should not be able to express. That's what absolute free speech means. Doesn't mean you could fraudulently lie to somebody and sell them a product for private gain. Does it mean that you can threaten somebody and then follow through on that threat? No, 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 those aren't opinions. But free speech above all, if it means one thing, it means that all opinions are fair game and any criticism of the government is also fair game. And yet that's exactly what the government is clamping down on today. And that's exactly what I will restore as the next president.